Hello, this is Scott with Android Guys. And Luke. Luke, how are you? I'm all right. How are you? This uh, daylight saving thing? Ah, man, it's weird, right? It sucks. It, I was just saying to my wife the other day, it was like 7 o'clock. I was like, I feel like I should be going to bed. Like, it feels like it's been yeah. dark for so long already. Yeah. I Last night, I came home. I left work early, did a couple of things, and then got home. Now, normally, I leave the office 5, 5.30. Right. I'm home, sitting there, chilling, having, like, conversation with my wife, and they, I realize it's only 5.30, and I'm looking outside like, oh, this sucks, man. I know, dude. I'm all, I, I, like, I get that the days get shorter, and I know, like, I, this happens every year, and yep. it's, a, it's a stupid thing. But when you jump that one hour overnight, I hate those few days that follow it. Yeah, it's it was like so nice because it was like, oh, it's like you know one in the morning, and now it's one in the morning again. Like, yeah, oh, I'm not staying up late. It's mm-hmm. you know I gain an hour. Yep. But then the next day, it's like, man, it got so dark. Well, it's so still fast here too because the, it's warm. Yeah, and I feel like. I, I have things that I can still do. My yard has plenty of leaves. Sure. Uh, I could probably stand to mow again. Right. But now, when am I going to? Right. You know, here in Ohio, we're not promised nice weather on Saturday. Right. So, I feel like I, we're going to get stuck with all these leaves slick yeah. and yeah. stuck to the ground. You got to, you have to, like, you basically are forced, if you work, you know, normal hours, you're forced to, like... Just be on call on a Saturday or Sunday. Yep. If, if it's nice and it's light out, you got to get the yard work done. You have done. to. Yep. And then you don't want to get stuck putting up decorations if that's your thing, too. Yeah. I mean, we're heading into the, well, as we listen to this or promote this, it's the middle of November already. I know, dude. So we've been lucky. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I like it. Yeah. I wish the cold would start like now, though. I'm I'm I kinda need it. It feels like with the time change. Yeah. It, it feels if it starts right now, that would be fine. And then that means we're like done with the cold weather by March. But yep. as it stands now, it's usually like middle of December and then we have winter until May almost. Well really we're looking at, you know, just a shade over two weeks from now, I'll be getting my Christmas tree. Right. And it does not feel like that. No. We haven't had, I mean, we've had some frost, mm-hmm. you know, um, but that's it. Yeah. It just feels really weird to have the time change and the weather not kind of match up. Right. So I'm done with that rant. <laughs> I'm done talking about it. <laughs> We're going to move on. All right. Um, Luke, I have some accessories here that I've yeah. sent to the office. These actually are updates or new products. Of some things we reviewed earlier this year. Uh-huh. Uh, Mofi sent us some of their Snap Plus accessories. Yeah. These are pretty cool. And I know that they're designed initially around the MagSafe charging yeah. for Apple, but they work with any device yep. uh, that has wireless charging. It's a cool little concept, especially if your phone already has wireless charging. Uh, to And... Without really diving into all of the products, but there's about five or six of them now that you put a little <clears throat> magnetic ring on the back of your phone or case, and then it snaps to a charger or a stand or like a car dock. Uh-huh. Uh, a lot of phones have wireless charging, so it's kind of like a, a smart thing. Now, me personally, I don't like to have that ring or the extra accessory in the back of my case. Yeah. I don't know what it is, why that is, but I applaud and like things like these. Yeah. Um, we had one, we have one in my car for uh, my wife. Mm-hmm. She likes it. Um, and it's convenient, but yeah, that's, I think that's a personal thing. I, but I'm also, and it's not anything against Mophie, but it's one of those things where for me, even like um, pop sockets yeah. and those grips, yep. and those things, I just, I have a weird commitment. Thing yeah, with those. Well, I think I think this the Mophie Snap system would probably be okay for me if I went that route because it's so low profile. Yeah, but 
the you know we've had other snap kind of things and they just stick out too much and pop sockets i mean i keep my phone in my pocket mm-hmm. like um one a guy i work with has a pop socket and i asked him i was like doesn't that get in the way of like your pocket he's like yeah but then you get used to it i don't want to i don't yeah i don't want to either because mm-hmm. you always have you know a pop socket bump in your pocket yeah now the the snap plus is nice because it's really thin yeah it's super low profile tiny little uh you know thin hair of a magnet yeah it's like a metal ring or something yeah and you put that on the back and it comes each of them come with like a sizing kit to kind of put on there and find Mm -hmm. out where your charger is so it's really cool um and if you are looking for something like that i would definitely recommend it The, the newest two that we have here is one is just basically like a little platter uh wireless charger that you just plug in and snap to the back of your phone and the other one is the power station stand yeah mophi makes really cool products yeah their 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 quality is always good it's always has been and they've been doing this you know kind of fabric hybrid thing lately you know when you see it yeah it's got that soft black gray uh, mm-hmm. charcoal kind of look to it and a lot of their products i think almost all of them have two-year warranties too. yeah that's pretty so, incredible i don't have prices this is not an advertisement no not a plug these just happen to be two of the things that are on this desk and mm-hmm. just bringing them up um but we have reviewed these earlier in the year but i want to update that with a couple of the new accessories um luke have you uh been playing with any other products or apps or games or anything uh i mean i still play marvel strike force i've been talking about that for a couple weeks now, months. Let me ask you, what is the draw with the day, like the, the comeback to play it kind of thing? Okay, so there's, well, there's two things. So for me, and when I talked about it initially in the review, I think the thing that was drawing it to me is the the collection aspect. So you're collecting these different heroes and then you're mm-hmm. going through and doing these fights. And there's some PvP where you, you're in a... Um, uh, a guild essentially, and you fight other guilds. Um, but in the last couple weeks, I have two friends that play it also, and we're all in the same guild. Uh-huh. And so, and now you know, we got into a. Uh, it's not a guild. It's like a. A clan. Yeah, what is there's it? another word for it. Doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, posse. <laughs> <laughs> All, everything you're saying is the right idea. That's okay. not the word. Um, it's it's taking the game a little more serious, and so there's like timed, there's raid times, and there's uh, that's what your the PvP is against other. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do raids, um, or you do wars, and then raids are against the computer and AI. You go through like kind of like a gridded gauntlet and do different fights and there's different battle lanes um, and different, you know, different people, different heroes have different abilities. And so certain abilities will be good against other certain heroes. And there's a meta kind of a little bit. And so it's, as I've gotten more into the game, I've seen more and more of, you know, what's good and what's bad. And they do a really good job of making you kind of want to keep everybody leveled up because you know new characters might take um a group of characters that people don't necessarily play much Mm -hmm. and you have to use them to unlock this new character oh so you know you're not just focusing on the newest and best now do you play with the other guys at the same time like to complement each other as a team? no no there's no like real time like playing together like we um, we strategize. Actually, we have a a Discord server for our our um, our group, and um, they we have set raid times and like uh. different like lanes of like, hey, this is what you're gonna do for your lane, and this is what you're you know you're assigned to this route and this this team and this route, and. Uh, it's just really fun. I don't know. It's it's one of those games where I check it 
I only have to, ch- I check it, you know, multiple times a day, but you really only need to play twice a day. You get a, you get an energy refresh like halfway through the day and, and once at night. Um, and so you don't really need to do much more than that, but you know, you can always pop in and do a quick battle PVP battle or an AI battle or work through the campaign and stuff. And they keep adding more and more chapters to different campaigns it's called an alliance. That's the word. An al- uh, alliance. I I was sure it was posse. Posse. It, posse felt really, really right, but Marvel it wasn't posse. Right. Yeah. It rolls off the tongue. Yeah. Way better than alliance, but you know whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean that's the one I've been playing uh lately. So I've been stuck on uh, Stranger Things Puzzle Tales. Yes. And I scored it very highly. Uh-huh. I was, I think I remember on the, on the episode where I reviewed it, it was early because. Yeah, there, there weren't were, really many downloads at all. Yeah. Uh, an official press release went out last week, like Friday. About the launch of the game? The game is actually officially like. Oh, out wow. Now. So I, we were definitely early on. Ahead of the curve. Checking it out. But um, over the weekend was the. Uh, anniversary of stranger things okay debut so it's like stranger things day mm. so they added a an in-game uh character that you can add to your team yeah and uh so i did that and started to kind of level him up as quickly as i can um they also added another mechanic to the game since i reviewed it called the gaming table mm. and what the game does is it looks at your five best players or your best characters. And then you have a table of so many spaces that you can put your other players on. So if you have other characters that are like level, like my five best are, you know, maxed out at a hundred right now, Mm -hmm. but I have a few that, you know, are level one and seven, like, you know, 40, just random, but uh, you can put them on the gaming table and fill this slot what it does is it makes them it gives them the same level of power so you can kind of get like a preview of nice what a level 120 would be nice you cannot promote that character okay so you can't actually take like a three-star guy and turn him into a three and a half or four like you cannot promote it but by doing that, uh, let's say I had a couple of guys. Like right now, actually, all of my top five are uh, at 120. Mm. And I have some other ones that are 100. If I wanted to put somebody on the table, and maybe they were level 100, it would make them act as if they were level 120. So it would boost all their hit points and health and stuff. But I get credit back for all the stuff that I invested in leveling that person up. So it kind of rewards you by putting people on there that you've kind of worked your way up and just haven't put them all the way up. So they give you all the credit back. And then if you ultimately want to power those people up or promote them, you can take them off the gaming table and kind of start over with them. Nice. So it was kind of confusing and it's kind of weird to describe, but um, it isn't like really clearly spelled out in the game. Kind of had to figure out what was happening. Sure. But uh, it's a cool mechanic. Nice. Um, and that's a game where I, I still play every day. Uh-huh. I, I would still give it high marks, but I have hit points where um, I'm logging in and just kind of going through some of the motions to collect some things. Right. Um, but I still love the game. Yeah. I would still give it very high marks. And there are points where I'll sit down and just do the battles, the the match three stuff. But then there are points where I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to let this automatically fight for me, put, you know, hit play and let it kind of see if I built the right deck of guys or team of guys and let it go through that. So, um, plenty of reasons to play each day. Nice. Um, it's a really cool game. So if you guys haven't checked that out, um, Marvel Strike Force. Yeah, Marvel Strike Force. And Stranger Things Puzzle Tale. Uh, Luke, just as we were getting ready to record this, um, today uh, Poco put out a new phone. Yeah. And uh, it's another, uh, I mean, these guys, 
essentially play in the sandbox of affordable phones. Right. And they they don't position themselves as super high um, hardware and price tag and flagship stuff. Right. But when you look at them on paper and even some of the ones that we've kind of had time with, they're pretty compelling packages. Uh, today's was the, um, or as you're listening to this would have been last week, the M4 Pro. Uh, yeah. This one has a 6.6 6 inch display with a refresh rate that dynamically changes, but goes up to 90 hertz. Uh, four gigabytes of RAM or six storage, 64 gigabytes or 128, a 50 megapixel camera and a 5,000 milliamp battery. Really cool stuff with an early bird price of about 200 to $220. It's insane to me. It's cool, man. And like we, we played around with it a little bit. Yeah. And the cool blue, cool blue. It's snappy it's responsive mm-hmm. it feels good um i've messed around with the camera a little bit i will say this it's got a 50 megapixel camera that you can shoot full resolution in raw that's not something that you normally would expect on a phone that price you i mean you can't even do that in the pixel pro 6 pro right yeah getting getting raw Getting full resolution out of, uh, you know, that size of a camera is really big for one. Like it's, it's just, it's a really cool thing to be able to do, but you, I'm amazed that you see that in a, you know, $250 phone. Yeah. And based off of the time that I, we've seen uh, spent with other Poco phones, their quality devices and the UI is very close to stock Android Mm -hmm. with some extra features that don't really get bloaty or in the way. They just kind of make it so that you can get a little bit more customization or personalize the phone. Uh, It's so hard to see a phone like that on the heels of a phone like the pixel, right? Because you look at that and go, that's obviously all I really need. Right. But when you have a Pixel 6, you know, in your hand that, you know, for the last 10 days, that's there's obviously going to be differences. Yeah. But you look at that and go, man, if I'm buying a phone mm-hmm. uh, for a family or my uncle or somebody comes and says, hey, what would you recommend? It's really tough to not suggest something like that. Yeah. The only thing is, you you I find people run into is um, who, I'm right? Not, yeah, know. it's just name recognition, and then a lot of people aren't willing to take a risk on a brand that they don't know anything about. Yeah. Now it goes a long way if you're, you know, you have a relationship with them and you're recommending it, and they know mm-hmm. that you know this is what you do for a living. But um, yeah, it's it's interesting to see. If if devices like this catch on with mm-hmm. features like that, the race to the bottom is awesome. What yeah? What do the what do the big guys do then? Right. You know, do they go? Oh, well, okay, we'll give that to you. Or do they go? You know, well, we're still giving you this, this, and this. Yeah. It well, and and the two hundred and fifty, the sub two fifty space. There are a lot more phones than I think people realize yeah. out there. And from brands that they already know, but from mm-hmm. a lot of brands that they may not know. Uh, but I find to be a little bit more exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, Realme, yep. Poco, Xiaomi. Uh, those are you know three brands that I'm watching very closely. Mm-hmm. I like. Blue. Blue, yeah. Same thing. I mean, that's what these companies excel at mm-hmm. is this – alternative to you know these premium looking uh the aesthetics on these phones are way above where they could be or should be when you compare how these things look uh contrast that to a few years ago when you had a 250 fifty dollar phone they were just slabs they were just gray boring yep. utilitarian devices and now these the the materials you know even if it's plastic it doesn't look plastic Right. Uh, the color gradients, the materials, 
the trim the design is just feels much more intentional right well and most of these phones the other thing about them is most of them are coming with a clear case yeah and so even if it's not the build quality that you know you're going to get from a standard quote unquote flagship device mm -hmm. you're getting a case for it yeah included and a lot of these at this point come with headphone jacks yep and more and more of them have wireless charging mm -hmm. and uh, wireless charging is starting to sneak into that mm -hmm. as a standard at that price that's an exciting space and one that i feel like uh like nokia also does really well there mm -hmm. motorola has always you know done well with the e and the g series yeah it seems to be getting a little bit uh, back into the the junior flagship and higher end, sure. which I get. Um, but you know, like OnePlus, they switched over, started doing like the Nord line, which mm -hmm. you know also competes at this price point. I, I, I would say if you're listening to this, you you probably already a somebody who follows Android, but if you're mom or your brother or somebody is like hey man i need a new phone don't be afraid to recommend some of these brands 5g connectivity 4g do your homework on those find out if they are compatible a lot of these are global models and that you can get them from amazon or other retailers that will support your carrier and you can always check um, find out if it's compatible but a lot of these global devices or if you buy them from their website, we'll offer that. And again, 5G is a is a thing where you may or may not care. So that's another thing with the $200, $250 phones are only 4G is, you know, you would qualify that as. But really, what are your needs? I mean, if you're playing games and synchronizing, updating photos and things like that, you don't really need to have a 5G connection. So I would... I have no problem recommending those brands to people and I, I, I get not pushback, but I get these like glances of like, really? And I have to kind of tell people, yeah, man, I'm telling you that's a good phone. Yeah. So keep your eye on those. I think you'll see more of those and don't be afraid to recommend those to your friends um, or even get one for yourself. Luke, I think that's it for me on apps, products, reviews things like that do you want to get into movies tv other things that we've been yeah checking out where do you want to start i've got some notes here Ooh, i am good wherever i've been watching uh let's let's go movies movies yeah let's do movies i i watched so there's so much stuff to watch dude there's so much and sometimes i get overwhelmed with like what to watch i just go back into the archives and go, you know what? I haven't watched this in a while. I don't want to like put my mind into like getting into something new. Critiquing or following something. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, it's kind of like going to a restaurant where you're like, I don't want to try something new. It sounds good. Right. But I, I know that this burger is really good. <laughs> right. So I'm just going to eat that tonight. Right. And that's a total, uh, totally understandable move. Right. So what burger did you eat again? So the burger I had was Moneyball. Okay. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, dude. It's a 2011 movie. Uh, Is it that old? Yeah, dude. Uh, Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill yeah. and Philip Seymour Hoffman. Man. Um, it's about the uh, Oakland Athletics mm -hmm. and uh, them trying to kind of change up the way uh, baseball was uh, teams were made. You know, the whole idea of you know, we need we need this many runs to compete for postseason. Mm -hmm. How do we get those runs? Not necessarily getting stars or getting the guys that look the part or that draw the crowd. It's how it's, do we manufacture wins? Yeah, who runs. who are the guys that get on base? Yep. Uh, you know, they're looking at high on base percentage, high, uh, you know, high strikeouts, high. Uh, not the guys hitting home runs, just who's getting on base and who's scoring. They're not stealing. You don't, st you know, I mean, there's part yeah. st parts in that movie where it's like, oh, stealing, that's what I do. It's not anymore. <laughs> yeah, you right. just get on base and you stay yeah. on base. Yep. That's an interesting thing because data is, I mean, it's everything now. Everything is 
uh, statistics and numbers and data. And that's what we are as, you know, Facebook users. We're not just a profile, but we are an age. We are a religion, a race, uh, you know, a proclivity to vote a certain way. We like these movies, this music, that's all data. Mm -hmm. And when you think about sports, it's all data too. Like it is. you look at heat maps, that's so uh -huh. much different than in the nineties when we watched things where like, this guy's shooting this from beyond the three point. Right. And here's his shooting from the key. Right. Or now you see these heat maps and see like, man, that guy is hitting everything from that part of there. Yep. Or uh, in baseball, the shift. Yeah. And where you put people on the field because you know that this guy, X number or percent of the time, is going to pull the ball here. Yeah. Like, no matter what, as a batter, I'm at, not as a batter, but as a fan looking at that, thinking, man, I would prove those guys wrong. I would totally hit it. In, yeah, you know, like well, and that's I, guess, I think that's the interesting thing. And and I don't know how it works in professional sports, but I think there's got to be some sort of conversation of hey, you're known for this. Yeah, what can we add to your tool belt to change it up to keep them guessing? Yeah, you know, like they they move everybody to the other side of second base. Yeah, and just kind of crowd that. Because let's work on your, you know. Let's pull it cranking to, it to right field. Yeah, right center right, and uh, see if we can get you a little bit more well routed. Yeah, that's that's an interesting thing. I love small ball. I love mm -hmm. stats. I love, I I love taking data and trying to figure out things and looking for trends and stuff. Sure. And so that kind of movie always that appealed to me, and I only saw that, I think, completely one time. Oh yeah. You should revisit the, it, man. Well, the fact that it's 10 years old already mm -hmm. tells me, yeah. I, yeah, you should revisit it. It's such a great movie. And, I mean, Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill, both are just such great performances. Mm -hmm. Like, really are. Um, yeah, it's it's just a good movie. It yeah. just really is. And it, it's a... It's a, um, it's a great baseball movie without it being a baseball movie, too. Well, and there's no... So... I don't really know exactly how to say this. I guess there's no other like human crap that gets in the way. You know what I mean? Like there's a little bit of story about um, Brad Pitt and his daughter. Yeah. And there's, you know, a little, you know, but that story is pretty much centered around, you know, if this doesn't go well, he's going to get moved to another team. And right. You know, his daughter is here with her mom and, you know, his or his ex wife or whatever. And so there's there's that tension. But there's no like personal I mean, there's there's some personal stuff with him because, you know, the story is is he came up as a player mm -hmm. and then, you know, kind of washed out and the whole idea of you know, do do what you don't don't just do things because it it it's what you think you should do, do what mm -hmm. you want to do kind of thing. Right. Um, but for the most part, it's just a baseball movie. You mm -hmm. know, it's based on a true story. Um, it's just such a great movie. I really like it. So I watched that. Um, and that's on Netflix right now as of, you know, November 2021. So. Um, and then I watched... Uh, a new movie on Netflix, a new Netflix movie, movie The Harder They Fall. Mm -hmm. That is uh, the Western. Yeah. Um, written partially and directed by James Samuel, um, who he kind of got known from the Jay-Z Great Gatsby video. He's okay. He's the guy that did the, you know, all of the direction on that. Mm -hmm. Um. I didn't really know him much from anything else. Um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's just a Western. It stars, I mean, there's a big cast. There's a lot of, a lot of people you've seen before, but notably is Idris Elba, um, Jonathan Majors, and Regina King were like the big three. Um, and Jonathan Majors, we know from like Love. Lovecraft country and he was just uh in Loki. Mm -hmm. We saw him as uh you know the one who remains or the the one at the end or yeah the one who remains. Yeah. Yeah. Kang basically. Shh. <laughs> Be spoiling stuff. <laughs> um 
If I mean, if you're not there yet, I mean, sorry, but not sorry. You've had time. Yeah, that's how I feel. You, uh, but he's great. He plays this character, Nat Love, and it's the story of it's basically a Western revenge story, but it's very stylized. It's very much, um, very much like that slick, real cool. You know, every character has personality and style. Um, but there's a lot of like, you know, single shots of people doing, you know, camera work and, and like, you know, uh, it's just a very, it's one of those movies that's really fun to watch because it's, it just looks cool. Mm -hmm. Everything looks cool. The shots are cool. People are cool. Yeah. And they're, and they're acting cool. You know, like yeah. it was just it was a it was a really fun watch. The movie itself, um, I kind of kind of falls apart towards the end mm -hmm. as, as far as like you you got a lot of story build up and a lot of things happen, and then the final uh, climax is like yeah, this maybe could have been tightened up a little bit better, or it maybe is not as believable as. You know, the way things happen maybe isn't as believable as you'd want it to be. Sure. Um, but uh, I still liked it. I still enjoyed it. What's the music? Is it a soundtrack, a score? Both. Okay. Yeah. And it's good. Are there it's cool, real good, too. Uh, vignettes or montages? Yeah. yeah there's a, I mean, it's just I. It's just a really fun watch. From, from the trailers and from what I've kind of gathered, and mm -hmm. I fully intend to watch this, I kind of envisioned some of those scenes of like uh just these random little spots of like Django Unchained where it's like the music oh yeah for sure where it's just kind of like this has nothing to do with the time period mm -hmm. you know just this looks cool right yeah there's there's definitely framed that. awesome yep. and slow motion or yep. yeah yep I'm in yeah it's just good. haven't found the time yet yeah so I watched that. That's a great watch. I mean, I'm a sucker for a Western. I I think that's my favorite movie genre. Really? I think that's my favorite. I mean, that might just be my favorite genre in general. It's underrepresented. I love Westerns, man. I feel I, I've, I've said before that if I could go back in time and live any time, I would probably want to be a pirate because I think pirates are awesome but i i think that i would change to western like yeah. i would i would live in the wild west well you can still move to like montana and yeah but it's and not the same man live the life no it's not the same you can be a you can start a dude ranch a dude ranch <laughs> you, can, you don't no you don't want to no, do i it. don't want to i don't have any time for dudes i can be your farmhand <laughs> <laughs> no no i'd i'd probably be a hand i'd if I was in the Western, I'd be Hoss from <laughs> from the Ponderosa. Like a cattle wrangler. Yeah. That could be uh Yeah. You you should do that. All right. When when uh cryptocurrency gets to a certain point <laughs> and we can live our lives doing what we want. Well I we're gonna hear... be there. If we look at like all of the dystopian stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is actually a good segue. Um when we get into like some dystopian movies, we always see people are back to like riding horses. Isn't that weird? So we're gonna be, you know, eventually we're gonna be cowboys. You're gonna have right? to, yeah. You're gonna have to be learn to be a cowpoke. Yeah, I'm gonna have to I need to learn how to ride a horse. You better hurry. And how to care for a horse. That's so expensive though. Yeah. That's one of those things now that's like I think those people are gonna be winning the apocalypse. Yeah. The people that have horses now. The the horse, yeah. He who holds the horse <laughs> holds the power. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm telling you, man. You need to start a dude ranch, be a a wrangler, a wrangler. I get out there and I'm gonna practice spitting first. You'll be a, you'll be ahead of the curve. If I'll you, just practice spitting first. Off off camera, off show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you could totally. <laughs> I could see you doing it. <laughs> Are you a Spurs kind of? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, chaps. Yeah, I was a big David Robinson fan back in the nineties. Oh no, no, no. Not oh, those I see what you meant. I see. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, dude, it's a good movie. It's really, you know, it's it definitely knows what it is. 
Yeah. You know, it's 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 a very, you know, stylized movie. Doesn't take itself too seriously? Um I don't No, I I think it does. Hmm. I think it's very much like there's some it's over the top. Like the there's a lot of gun violence, a lot of uh you know, fist fights and it's definitely the gritty wild west um so there it's it's bloody it's there's some stuff in it but it's not uh there there's some funny stuff too like there's it's there's comedy there's you know comedic relief but overall it's a it's a revenge movie cool and it's yeah it's stylized and i i don't think they i don't think they were trying to make it you know, a tongue in cheek kind of thing, or it wasn't the, Hey, we know, wink, wink, we know what we're doing. Like, I think there is some of that of people that are fans of, you know, spaghetti Westerns and stuff. You'll see certain shots and certain things and be like, Oh yeah, that's a that's Western a thing. Obvious nod to. Yeah. But okay. no, it's a, I think it was just, you know, definitely a serious movie. Have you watched, uh, Yellowstone? Yellowstone. Oh man. For, uh, fan of westerns the series on paramount plus with kevin costner oh so i started that i totally forgot about them yeah i've watched uh new season just started from what i'm i gathering. think i watched i've only watched one episode mm-hmm. the very first episode uh that's is that the one that starts out with the tr- uh, i haven't watched it truck wreck i don't yeah. know okay anyway yeah uh i haven't haven't watched Watch well, stop watching yet. Moneyball. I can't. Man, <laughs> I watched. So I told you before we recorded that I think I've watched Moneyball probably ten times. See, you know how many TV shows? I know that's a whole season of a show. Books. Yeah. Well, books. I'm still doing Wheel of Time. Well, so. you would be further along. That's true. If you quit messing around with Moneyball, <laughs> I can't help it. It's such a great movie. Uh, did you ever watch Open Range? Yes. With Kevin Costner. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Kevin Costner is a good cowboy. He's a, yeah, he is. He's he's grown into that uh, look. Yeah, and that just that demeanor. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, did you watch the movie? He was in. I'm gonna. I can't remember the name. Uh, it was released strictly on uh, digital, but it was uh, originally going to be at the theater last year but then they pushed it back because of the uh pandemic let him go with oh no i don't think i heard of Diane that one. lane Mm-mm. do yourself a favor yeah it's I've a good seen, one yeah it's a good one um he and diane lane are husband and wife kind of grandparents mm. it's kind of weird because they were mom and pa kent yeah together right. but um yeah it's got some nice tension Ooh. not western but i think it's one of those ones that you'll go that was a good movie Oh, cool. I'll yeah. have to check it out. Yeah. Let him go. Let him go. Um, I saw a movie. Oh, yeah? Since the last episode. Actually, just watched it last night. Eternals. Ooh. You want to talk about TV shows? <laughs> no. I want to talk about Eternals. Okay. Uh, you haven't Spoiler seen Spoiler free, please. Yeah. And I'll, I'll not try to set any table for you. Okay, In terms cool. of what, okay. how to feel about the film. That's a hard thing to do. I appreciate that. It's it's tough. Um, I enjoyed it. Okay. Um, I liked. I'm in like with it. I'm not in love with it. Okay. But I can't. I mean, there are. It's hard for me to really put my finger on what it is that kind of fell flat for me. I think given more time, I mean, it's been less than 24 hours. That I could actually tell you some of the the nitpicky stuff I have. Mm. But. I think it just kind of comes from establishing or introducing an entire team of people and each of them having their own personalities and skills and traits. And uh, I went in kind of cautiously thinking it might be another way of like Guardians of the Galaxy was here's a whole team of people. Right. Here are people you may not even have any understanding of, but they. But you will. You will. And they exist. Sure. Comic booky, you know. Um, I, I liked a few things, mm-hmm. 
but I there aren't very many things where I walk away going, oh, I can't wait to talk about that. Okay. There's not really some some set pieces or action sequences where I'm like, that was cool. Right. Um, I am curious to where things go. Sure. From here. Um, Do you think, you know, uh, and I don't, maybe I don't know if you can answer this. Do you think it's, well, it's obviously it's getting put through its paces in the review cycle. Yeah. Um, does it warrant a part two? And do you think it would get one? Um, uh, story wise, I think it does warrant a part two. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to get one. Okay. Even based off of the lukewarm, I don't think that they're ready to throw that out and just say, okay, that was, we it, we'll leave them alone, but kind of incorporate them into yeah. some other stuff. I think there's some story to tell yeah. with the characters. Uh, my wife is a, she's not a fan of Angelina Jolie mm. for some reason. She can't even really articulate why she's okay. always said that. I don't know what it is about her. I just don't care for her. Intimidation. Maybe. She's a gorgeous woman. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, your wife is good looking too, though. Okay. I believe you. I mean, you know that. <laughs> uh, the It's weird to see her in what you would qualify as a supporting role. Oh, right. You know. Yeah, we've, we ensemble. haven't seen her in a supporting role in a very long time. Let alone a property like this. Sure. It's one of those names where you're like, oh, they're just casting everybody wants to get in Marvel now. Sure. It, everybody's going to have a Tell role. Tell me, Agent, I want to be in a Marvel movie. Yeah. I want some of that. MCU money. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what Christian Bale's doing. You're probably not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I I am interested to see him. Yeah. With Angelina Jolie, I didn't know that I was ever interested to see. But I don't know if it's a case of like how the movie's marketed, and I we can have a discussion after you see it as to maybe why it was marketed the way it has been, mm -hmm. or advertised mm -hmm. story-wise. Um there are, of course, it's Marvel, so there's a mid credits stinger and a post credit stinger. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'd like to talk to you about those. Yeah, me too. So, but they're not something where I'm like, man, these are one of the best. You know, this leaves me super excited or hype about where this goes. But it's there. Um, I think it could be fun. I think it could be interesting to see, you know, it, they, I think they did a good job of, you know, these guys have been here for thousands of years. Why haven't they been, why haven't they helped? Why didn't they interfere with, you know, the whole commercial, like, why not get involved with Thanos? Right. And that's kind of explained uh, pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, it, I would see it. I would recommend seeing it, especially if you've already invested how many movies and I mean, have you seen all the Marvel movies? Every single one. Then why not see this one? Yeah, absolutely. That's the way I say it. I mean, I, I was not going to miss it, but yeah. it's it's gotten it's gotten, you know middling reviews. Yeah. You know, it's like certified certified rotten now. Right. Like it's because it was like just under sixty percent. Which is, you know, I think the I think the weird part and the you know, the reason I say it's been put through its paces is because Categorically, that doesn't happen with Marvel movies. Yeah. yeah. Normally, you start hearing like, wow, this is actually a great spy movie. Mm -hmm. You know, Winter Soldier or uh, Civil War. And some of these are like, they're standalone. They're genre films. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't hear that about this one. Right. Um, okay. Well, yeah. So you you were in like. I was it. in like with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. That's about as much as I want to get into that's here. That's fair. I'm, I'm going to see it ASAP. Okay. Um, but that's really it for me movie-wise this past week. It's, it's okay. been a, a weird week in terms of what I did with my time. Um, but I have watched a few other things. Oh, yeah? I'm staying up on you know TV and you know keeping up with Kirby Enthusiasm uh -huh. and doing uh, Survivor on Wednesday and that type of stuff. But uh -huh. uh, other than that... Most of my TV and streaming has been teasers and trailers of things coming up. Ooh, let's talk about that. What'd you see? Uh, the big one, I think, would probably be Stranger Things. Yeah. Season four. 
Okay. Yeah, we just saw a teaser for that teaser trailer. How excited are you about this? So, I, I don't know. I'm not. I like Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. Um, as it's as every season has come out, I have liked Stranger Things less. Yes. And it, it's weird to say that because it's not like I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I just don't find it as uh, as captivating. I don't have the need to watch it as much as I did when the very first season yeah. aired. The very first season. Lightning I, in a bottle kind of thing. Right. And I, I just I wanted more of it. I wanted more of that. It was, you know. They nailed the tone. They nailed the dialogue, the, tone, the, the music, the music, everything. It yeah. was just it just worked. Like this, and then this felt right. And then they and they kept doing it. I mean, they really did. Yeah. They kept nailing those certain little snapshots in in culture. Yeah. Um. And I I don't have a doubt that they're going to do it again on the fourth one, but I just don't. It's not as exciting anymore. Maybe it's weird to think like the universe continues to expand and the story gets bigger. Like I was happy with the story kind of ending where it did on one and kind of like, oh, this is this little town and this is what's going on and this is what has been happening under everybody's eye. Right. I don't need the the bigger stakes kind of stuff because if you start to go down that road, then you can always go another mile down that road and say, mm -hmm. yeah, but what if, imagine if this was going on mm -hmm. or this guy was actually not even the bad guy. Imagine if this was the big bad. So I feel like that could be a, I, I want to see it just because. Yeah, I'll I'm watch like, it for sure. Watch it. You know, I like, I like. It the, looks like the, it's going to be a lot more intense. You know, it kind of, the trailer starts out it like it's pretty just, slow. Yeah. But then we, we get into this montage of things it's gonna get dark yeah i mean it's it looks like it could be pretty violent there was uh i mean we've seen you know now there's a like a gun <laughs> right i mean we really haven't seen many like guns in yeah, this yeah. show it's right it's all general. supernatural yeah kind of um you know it, it, it'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting to see, you know, how how serious this gets because it still feels like it's a show about kids. Yeah. Um, kids who look like they're aging very quickly. Right. You look at these kids, man. Yeah. I, I don't know, story-wise, if they push that far forward in terms of years. Right. Like, where does Where does this end? Where does the story end? Right. Do I care enough to stick around or am I obligated to stick around? Right. That's kind of where I'm at. Um, another trailer that I watched is from a, I, I found out from a book that completely slid by under my radar. Sure. Uh, Station 11. Yeah. You got me hip to that. And I watched the trailer. Uh, I'm in. Yeah. It, I watched that. And immediately start hearing dialogue like, I found you nine times before, I'll find you again. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm in. The, yeah. I, what do you mean? I, I'm a sucker for... Um, time travel. Time travel. Parallel yep. dimensions or... Uh, clone people versions of yeah. yourself. Like metaverse, multiverse, anything. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, so I, I looked it up and I thought it was... First I thought it was a movie, then I looked at it found out that it's a series mm -hmm. and then i realized that it was adapted from a book mm -hmm. so i immediately went to audible and was like yes please nice added it to my library i will be uh traveling here yeah and the book is just under 11 hours okay so if i listen to it at the right speed that seems doable i'm traveling across country so uh -huh. i might be able to get a there and back kind of listen yeah, to the whole book and nice We'll see. Yeah. You know, I, I will probably fall asleep on the plane and yeah. not know anything. But, um, it I mean, it just looks pretty cool. It, it looks like an interesting concept. I don't know anything. And I, I won't dive into it this close to it being out now. Yeah, sure. Um, but I feel like I want to get the book in. Before. Before. Okay. But I don't want to go 
reading too many synopses. Yeah. And like, I don't, I don't need any of that. I don't need to know a character's name. That's exactly what I'm doing with wheel of time. I, I've been, I'm ready for that show. It's we're here at, you know, a couple of weeks Crunch out. Time. Couple. I'm almost done with the second book. Shut up. Yeah. I've been, I've been listening to it like a madman. <laughs> Um, at uh, 4X on the... No, just right. I mean, I drive a lot for work. Uh, so I'm usually driving. I usually get about yeah. two, two and a half hours. Are you listening day. at a faster pace? Nope. I don't listen at any at times speed because to me it always, it pulls me out of the story. Yeah. Because uh, it just sounds off slightly. Oh. So I can't, I can't do it. I, I will typically... Start out a book at one, and then after an hour or two, go to one hundred five, one point mm-hmm. one, and just find that sweet spot. If it's not a fiction book, I can do that. Mm-hmm. But if it's fiction, I really want to hear, you know, the pauses in the conversation. Yeah, that's the, you know, I that's wanna... the sweet spot. Yeah. Of am I getting the story or am I getting, am I getting the story? Right. Like I know what's happening, but the other thing is, do I feel like I'm living in the story? Right. When you're reading a book. You start to imagine the pauses and the, right. the delivery. And I like that about audible books because a lot of times they will do that. But if you're at a, you know, 1.5, 2X, you're not getting any of that. Right. Do you find yourself, this is a weird off the wall question that I, I found myself doing when I was driving, listening to the book. Do you find yourself making the facial expressions that are described uh, yeah. to to be like, oh, okay, they were doing this? Like, yeah, I found myself doing that. I, I've, I've done driving. that where I'll, you know, somebody's like wincing. Yeah. I'll be sitting at a red light holding a wince face, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or like you looked at him with and he had a, a, a smile that didn't quite touch his eyes. Like, what does that look like? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. What is that smile? So you're acting it out yeah to, yeah i'm trying to think like what is a smile that doesn't touch your eyes <laughs> what does that mean that's the the fake one that you give each other when you pass at the grocery right. store the, yeah. just, uh, the <laughs> yeah. pur- pur- purse the mouth <laughs> i'm not a threat to you i won't sh- i'm not gonna show you my teeth <laughs> but i want to smile right yeah i'm a friendly person because you're right there yeah. that's it hello hello <laughs> hello that's human yeah. bye <laughs> i see you and i will not attack you Good day. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a lot to say with that little glance. Right. We know exactly what glance I it is. I do. I'm making it. And yeah. if you're listening to the show, you're making it right now. <laughs> you're sitting in your car, giving the guy next to you the look of, hello, I'm not a threat, <laughs> but I don't know you. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we know that look. I'm not trying to invite anything with a smile. Yeah, but we don't need to talk. No. I don't need to hear hell of a game last night or anything. How's it going? Don't – no. Nope, I don't care how it's going. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, but that's it for me TV-wise. Uh, Luke, you, have you started any TV shows? Yeah. So I have two actually. Um, I have – I started Peaky Blinders. All right. On, uh, on Netflix. I missed that. Um, it's been one that I've always seen like on like, Mm -hmm. you know, ones to catch up on or, you know, things to watch. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start it because I wondered why you came in with your haircut that way today. Right. Yeah. Right. And (laughs) kept lighting the cigarette. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. It makes sense. Wearing my pants real high. Yeah. Got, you know, high water pants on. Um, no, it's good. It's it's you know it's England in the 1900s. Cillian Murphy plays Thomas Shelby. He's a gangster. Yeah, pretty cool so far. I'm like two episodes in, so oh, okay, not so that it's, far. It's you're not in the vibe yet. No, you're not, you're no, not. I'm I'm still learning the world. So you're just cosplaying, yeah. Right now, you're not actually, yeah. Okay, on the surface, I'm a I'm a f- I'm a, a fan tourist. right now. I'm a tourist. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. What else are you watching? Uh, the other show is also new to Netflix. It's been a Netflix. I feel like all I've done has been on Netflix. But um, you can watch Moneyball on there. Yeah. Did you know that? I heard that. So good. 
Um, it's 10 years old now. Yeah. Yep. That's real good. It's a movie just about baseball. Um, <laughs> no side stories. No side stories. <laughs> um, Arcane is a animated show on Netflix. It's in the um, League of Legends, which is a video game. Yeah. It's in that League of Legends universe. And it's interesting how they're doing these releases. Every week they're releasing three episodes. And it's um, a very... Very, uh, like League, League of Legends is is a fantasy based, mm-hmm. um, MOBA. So you know, multi multiplayer online battle arena. I yeah, think is what it is. Yeah, um, and it's just a story of how some of the main characters from that game, uh, you know, kind of their origin stories, and uh, it's it's a world I know nothing about. I. I think I've played the game a handful of times, but um, it the the style of the animation is awesome. It's really, really well done, um, and so far, it's you know it's got really it's got great voice voice acting, and mm. uh, the story is is compelling. It's um, you know the story of these kids in kind of a lower part of town trying to you know make a name for themselves and you know, it's about, you know, upper class versus lower class. And then there's, you know, other bad guys that are doing the various things on their, for their own good. It's like a place where magic used to exist or something. And now, uh, you know, people are trying to find more magic or. Okay. It's cool. It's kind of steampunky ish. Okay. Seems like fantasy steampunk. Um, I'm looking at it now. Do you know who does the opening theme? I do. It's Imagine Dragons. <laughs> does it sound like Imagine Dragons? It for sure does. <laughs> uh, I it's actually in the credits, and but uh, before it came on, I was like, wait a second, this sounds way familiar. Yeah, uh, and it's definitely it's you know it's a good song. The opening credits are really good. Um, so that's called Arcane. Yep, it's just called Arcane. Um, there might be like a tagline or something, but it's uh, in the League of Legends universe. And uh, about 40 so, minutes. Is that right? The episodes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not long at all. Um, and I think it, it just released it's just the first three episodes. And then uh, they'll release three, I think, for the next two weeks. I think it's just nine episodes. And maybe it's 12. But um, but yeah, I think that was, that's a cool way. It's kind of a a mix for the people that want to binge and also the people that want like a, you know, a weekly release schedule Mm -hmm. uh, to, I think that's a cool kind of compromise. Nice. I'll check it out. You know, I read something somewhere that imagine dragons Mm -hmm. makes music for intermissions at keynote addresses. (laughs) (laughs) And it's so accurate. It very, yeah, it, it really is. It's the music that they play that you get up and you kind of mill your way back out yeah. to Comic Con and yeah, just it, that's hit the, the bathroom and yep. grab a bite on your way to the next exhibit hall. That's the that's the noise that's happening in yeah. the background, the sound. Yeah, so, and I, once I heard that, every song I hear them and I I just imagine that being used for that yeah. purpose and it works so well. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yep. Um, anything else you want to talk about? No, man. I think that's about it. Luke, I have two things. All right. Hit me. Uh, I'm a huge fan of meats and cheeses. Yeah. Charcuterie boards mm-hmm. are my jam. Yeah. Uh, this We start to get into this type of season and you start to see the snacks. Yes. And the gift packs of uh, beef sticks and things like that that you could get. And uh, as a kid and growing up, I always look forward to this time of year because you just snack on those things. You know, mm-hmm. you set out the uh, the tray and go at it. Right. Um, but as I've become more cultured and adult and spend my own money and do my own things. Yes. I... Buy meats and cheeses throughout the year. Mm. And uh, my wife and I, she actually got me a uh, 
a board, a charcuterie board, customized one. Oh, nice. Um, as an anniversary gift a couple months ago. And there's a woman locally who will, uh, she makes signs and t-shirts and um, like a whole range of things. Oh. And she's got all these different devices to like engrave, um, to like, just, I mean, if you think about some kind of collateral yeah. or marketing or anything advertising, why she's, she can do that. So she got into uh laser engraving and etching. Nice. She had talked to my wife and she got a, um, a board and had the, uh, Jedi sigil. Yeah. Uh, engraved on the one side and then the other side has the Jedi code on it. So oh, cool. It's awesome. Yeah. And I'm always putting, uh, you know, cutting up different meats and cheeses. Yeah. So um I realized as I go to the store and I look around like where do I find these uh you know different things and, mm-hmm. you know it's not like I'm putting bologna. Yeah. <laughs> putting bologna and American cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You got craft singles and yeah. some Oscar Mayer yeah, hanging just, out. You know, peel off open the packs that you want to eat and <laughs> It's like a block of spam. Well, yeah, and you, there's a knife here. Just cut off the spam and the Velveeta, and <laughs> <laughs> you don't like my board. Um, it's, it's not my thing. Okay, I'm gonna enjoy it. All right, you enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aldi, yeah, as a store, I think has probably my favorite selection. Interesting. And I know this is not something you'd expect to hear on an Android podcast. <laughs> but I'm telling you, if you want to step up your meat and cheese game, there's quite a selection at your local Aldi. So I, Aldi is one of those places that we uh, we love Aldi in our family. And, you know, it's it's Trader Joe's, essentially. Yep. It's, you know, budget Trader Joe's. But they have they have it down, man. They like, do? The way that the stores are laid out, they got, you know, it's easy to know what you're looking for and the, it's easy to discover new things. Mm-hmm. Um, and their checkout system, man, they're so fast. Yeah. Like it's it's a really impressive kind of uh, experience. It's a weird thing. For grocery shopping. It, 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 for me, uh, 20 years ago, I would have seen the brand. And just associated it with like just like Dollar General or something. Yeah, low quality, low yeah. price, like just all generics. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah. Um, and I think it was because of where some of their locations were. As I grew up, they were sure. right next door to other stores mm-hmm. like that. So, kind of got lumped in. But we have one here, you know, about a half a mile from where we're at now, and they have, I mean, all kinds of stuff that is. Yeah. I prefer their brand over some of the other stuff. So, sure. um, yeah, when it comes to different types of uh, weird cheeses and, you know, if you want to try uh, like 10 different flavors of goat cheese right. and Gouda and cheddar and like that, I mean, they have, and it's pretty cheap. You know, nice. I, I don't say cheap, inexpensive. Right. That's the word. Um, and then the meat, the prepackaged meat, you could take it out. If you want to do a cool date night, you want to have some fun, you want to impress people, get out a cutting board or yeah. get out, uh, I don't know, some flat cert, put it on the back of a trapper keeper. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Once you cover it with meat and cheeses. Yeah, it doesn't then, really matter. Yeah. That's, that's the, uh, that's the. The surprise element when you get to the right. bottom. Oh, this is on a trapper keeper. Yeah. Uh, Some would say the world is your cutting board. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. A table. Yeah. You know, just fold up your meat into, you know, two to three times and, you know, overlap them. Cut your cheese up into different weird shapes. Uh, and then if you've got crackers, what I found from going places, if you want to get charcuterie board, the best thing to do to make it look expensive is to break some of those crackers oh okay so it looks intentional mm. you know this, this round thing actually is jagged and mm. so yeah it's all right all right and then uh slap on some random pickles or olives Ooh, some, no olives for me no olives for me i don't touch them i put them in those little tiny little uh 
what are those called? Ramekins? Yeah. I put them in there because I don't want to touch in anything. Yeah, don't don't get any of your oliveness on my meat and cheese. Right. Uh, now. Pickles, though. Um, equal opportunity pickle man. Yeah. So I'll, I'll bring one in one day. All right. I'll set it up. All right. Well, I'll what about have, dips? You got dips? Some, oh, man. Mustards. Yeah. I love mustards. All kinds of browns and yellows. And Sweets and Dijons and spices. Yeah. All right. I can see your eyes lighting up. The, yeah. Hey, I am a dip guy. I will put together a meat and cheese tray uh, tonight, and mm. I'll bring it in here and set it on the desk. So next week when we get in, <laughs> it's ready it's to go. It's ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> right over there in front of that big-ass window. All right, sweet. Yeah. So you can see it when you pull up. Like, oh, I get excited. You, you can tell that. it's fancy because of the fuzz. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got blue cheese on there, too. <laughs> no, that's mozzarella, bro. <laughs> oh. Yep, come on in. Eat. Oh, it smells like a locker room in here. Yeah, it's expensive meat. <laughs> it's, it's really good meat. And good cheese. It's the cheese. <laughs> it smells like some kind of cheese in here. Yeah. It's got a, you uh are you doing perms in here? <laughs> perms. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe it's just a meat and cheese tray. Uh, All right. Uh, that's enough of that. <laughs> uh, the only other thing, and I was thinking about this, wh- why didn't I watch very much new stuff this week? Mm. Um, time change got me all jacked up. Yeah. You know, and it made me uh, I hate, the, hate the world Sunday, and I watched the Packers game. Oh. I want to talk about that. Yep. Um, so Sunday, I was just like, I'm not. I'm just going to go sit in the corner and pout. Uh, Saturday night, I went and did a yin sound immersion yoga. Ooh. My wife is a yoga instructor. Yes. And uh, she's got a uh, little yoga room. Mm-hmm. And so she teaches a couple times a week, but she also has other instructors. And she had a workshop kind of thing mm. uh, over the weekend. And uh, my wife uh, signed me up. Yep. She didn't really know what I was getting into. She told me, uh, you're free to back out. I don't know what you're doing. Um, I have an idea, but if you don't feel comfortable, don't, you know. But I take yoga about once a week uh, on Thursday nights. I go to my mm-hmm. wife's class, and um, this was pretty cool, dude. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, this was a full experience was, you know, not just yoga when, you, you know, you're thinking of, like, down dog and... Yeah, Blanks. You want to just sit in child's pose warrior. the whole time? Yeah, I just get down. Yeah, well, we did. And that's the thing bit. is like with yin, uh, you hold these poses for three to five minutes mm. and you'll start out, you know, on your back. And most of it was working on like your hips. Okay. So you might start with like crossing your left leg over your right mm-hmm. and kind of holding that for a few minutes and then doing the opposite and kind of just. Doing a little bit on your back, a little bit sitting up, a little bit laying down mm. on your side, stretching your arm over your head, but like holding these poses. But while she did that, um, she had all these different sound, uh, I guess you would call them instruments, but there's like uh, singing bowls mm-hmm. and um, chimes and different things that she would kind of play. She'd walk around the room. There were seven of us and uh, the room was dim and dark. She had um, some kind of like, I don't call them smart lights, but they were projecting kind of like Aurora Borealis on the walls. And, oh. um, but then she, as we did it pretty much kind of close your eyes the whole time and uh, just focus. And uh, it's almost like straight, meditative kind of thing it was really interesting because you hear these sounds and it's like man i want to listen to this when i go to bed or yeah. uh, you know this is relaxing and but like soundscapes yeah man it's yeah and after 90 minutes you know she was like now you'll probably go home if you guys go straight to bed she's like drink a lot of water i know it doesn't seem like you did a lot but you're you worked your body your uh your brain it, you know, did a lot of work. Your your body's going to feel feel it. And we went from there to uh, grab something to eat. And it was weird. It was almost as if I was, I had slept for the last hour and a half. Wow. 
it was kind of weird. I was wide awake, mm-hmm. but just it was a you know dark meditative room and right. Just nice to unplug for. Is there like any like essential oil or smell or anything? Um, she did. She had um a couple of things that she kind of walked around like lemongrass and some stuff that just kind of like wafted in the air. Mm. And then she went and put down a, uh, like a washcloth with um, lavender on it Mm -hmm. that we wanted to use. Um, But it was all about like spend the first 30 to 60 minutes getting comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to hold that pose. It doesn't matter if your pose is different than the guy next to you. If you can't reach your toes and do this, then do something else or just lay on your back or, Get in child's pose or whatever, but mm-hmm. so chill. Yeah, so, um, that sounds cool. Yeah, she's gonna be back, I believe, in January. Gonna okay. try to make it kind of like a monthly thing. So nice. I'll drag you over there. Yeah. All right. I'm doing. It's cool, man. So uh, that's what I was doing Saturday night, and then I just didn't have. I just didn't have it in me to go see anything that makes else. Sense. And yeah, yeah. So I was just chilling, playing on my phone, and yeah. Falling asleep on the couch. Nice. Yeah. We like that. This is the season of falling asleep early. Yeah, dude. Uh, it's dark. I got home. Give me my pajamas. Mm-hmm. Don't ask me to go back outside. Yep. Yeah. That's November. Yeah. I would, I don't know if I want it to snow because then it kind of like gives me an excuse to stay in. Yeah. Like a further excuse. But Yeah, but then also it you're like, oh, I got to do the driveway. Ugh. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and, and then you, well, and then it starts to do a number on you because you don't feel productive. Like you right. start to like, oh, I didn't do anything. I worked and went to bed. Yeah. I worked and went to bed. I'm like, That's not a way. Right. Shout out to mental health. Yeah. It's important, <laughs> especially at this time of year. Yeah. Seasonal effective. Sneak up on you. Yep. Real quick with this. And as we wrap this up, it's, I'm looking out the window now and I'm like, Boom. Yeah, it's starting to get yeah twilight. That's ugh. I know. All right, I'm done. Look, yeah, me too. You got anything? No, nah, I'm good. All right. Uh, this is Android Guys. My name is Scott, and I'm Luke. If you have any questions or feedback, shoot us an email. Uh, podcast at androidguys.com. Luke, if somebody wants to contact you directly, yeah, you can do that. Luke Gall G A U L on Instagram or Twitter. And I'm Scott Webster on Instagram and SWebster77 on Twitter. So if you have something you'd like to share with me or Luke that you think we'd be interested in, let us know. Yeah, if you're doing faces while you're listening to audiobooks, I want to know about it. Yeah, uh, shoot us a message describing a face and we'll make the face (laughs) for you and send you a picture back. (laughs) All right, guys, we'll see you later. See ya.